I never heard of such a thing in all my life. Mrs. Barton, if he doesn't come quickly, I don't know what I shall do. I'm dreadfully late for another wedding. Stick around, Judge. The boy will show up any minute now. Stop ringing your hands, Minerva. You'll tear a ligament. Oh, but it's so unromantic. Hello, everybody. Hi, Bob. I'm terribly sorry to be late. I, I couldn't help it, honey. I, I've got a cab waiting, so let's hurry, darling, or we'll be late for our honeymoon. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Uh, but Robert! Yes? You have... Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Goodbye. No. Come on, dear. Uh, just a minute, young man. Aren't you overlooking something? I know, Judge, but I haven't got time to kiss everybody. Bob, we're not married yet. Oh. Oh. Oh, well, we better do that first. I mean, uh, proceed, sir. Right this way. Right this way, if you please. Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh, say, Vinnie, just a minute. Say, I've got a great idea. Mm -hmm. uh, let you and me get married. Don't be silly. Who'd want a couple of old goats like us? My friends, I am glad to welcome you on this happy occasion. We are gathered here today to witness the most important event in the lives of these two young people, Robert Gordon and Ann Barton, and to join them together in holy matrimony. Thank you, Judge. Come on, darling, let's go. But wait! Hold everything! If you ain't done it, don't do it. Uh, Lieutenant Robert Gordon. Uh, Lieutenant Robert Gordon. Who's Robert Gordon? Robert Gordon, Lieutenant. Here, Who's here, Lieutenant here. Robert? Oh, Lieutenant, I got a telegram for you. It's official business, and it reads very funny. As near as I can make it out, you got to get someplace mighty quick. Well, let me see it. Now, just a minute now. Not so fast, young fella. Them kind of things you got to be signed for. Here, right there. Right. Here, here, put it right there. Wedding, ain't it? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yes, yes. Yeah, congratulations. Well, oh, well, I'm not... Here you are, boy. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Please. Good luck. Oh, Excuse me, will you please? A company detachment leaving Union Station at 1900. Report to Captain Harrison at 1830. If those misguided pals of yours are playing some sort of practical joke, it's I... no joke, honey. Those are orders. Oh, dear. What do we do now? I've never been so confused in all my life. Oh, yes, you have, Minnie. It's your own wedding. <laughs> and you should have seen it. Oh, well, then, of course, you could. And I'm in a spot. The, the train leaves at 1900. That's 7 o'clock, and I should have reported to Captain Harrison 15 minutes ago. Uh, sorry, folks, but I, I'll have to miss the reception. Oh. Well, just a minute, I'll go young man. The train. No, you won't. What you're going to do is say goodbye to me right now. If you please. Jonathan, I'll find out how to do that, and you've got a wife. What? I'll send you a wire, darling. Don't forget to cancel our hotel accommodations. I'll take care of everything. I love you, darling, and I always will. And this won't be for long. Just a minute, young man. Do you realize that you have... Of course haven't... I do, but I, I can't help it. Anne understands. She's a soldier's wife now. Not yet, she isn't. What? The interruption came before I started the ceremony. But I... I... You're so late now, son. You might just as well be a little later. Come on back and get hitched. Hey, where's the judge? Robert, I, I seen a play. I seen a play once where the fellow left the girl like that, and it was the saddest. Join hands. Do you, Robert Gordon, promise to love, honor, and cherish Anne? I do. And do you, Anne, make the same promise to love, honor, and cherish Robert? I do. Place the ring on her finger. And now, by reason of the promises and vows you have both made, and under the authority vested in me by the people of the state of Illinois. I now pronounce you husband and wife. Yippee, he made it! And now, young man, you may kiss the bride. You've done it better the first time. 
You mustn't allow yourself to become depressed by this unfortunate occurrence, Mrs. Gordon. As I was saying, Mrs. Gordon. Oh, that's me, isn't it? <laughs> Sooner or later, you and your husband will be together. In the meantime, you must comfort yourself with the thought that you were his bride spiritually. Not a good it'll do her. And you, dear lady, may find solace in the thought that you have gained a son, not lost a daughter. I'll say she hasn't lost a daughter. Excuse me, Judge Dinwiddie. And you gonna do something about this? What can I do? Listen, even if that 7 o'clock train was on time, which it ain't never been yet, you still got 10 minutes to make the station. You mean that... I mean your place is with your husband. Darling, you're so right. I should have thought of it myself, only all this excitement sort of gummicked up my thinking. Well, it's gummicked up thinking that gummicks up marriages. You gonna get going? You bet I am. My bags are all packed in the car. Let me know as soon as you settle comfy and cozy, and I'll be seeing you. Annie, you're a dear. Goodbye, mother. Hey, what's the meaning of this? There's no time to explain now. I'll write you all about it later. Yeah. Goodbye, Judge Dinwiddie. Goodbye, Annie, just a second. Here, take this. You'll need some money. Bless you. And uh, uh, these are flowers. <laughs> now, old bride's always got to have flowers. Oh, goodbye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. And are you sure you're doing the right thing? Have you got everything you should have? A bride should have a bridegroom, and I'm going to get mine right now. I beg your pardon. We haven't got any. I haven't got any what? Whatever it was you were going to ask for. We haven't got any drawing rooms. We haven't got any compartments. We haven't got any berths. We haven't got any seats. There isn't even room in the washroom for you. There ain't enough room for me to walk through the train. But I'm going to Faber. That's in Nevada. That's mighty interesting. But I don't know what I can do about it. Have a rose, won't you? Thank you. We still haven't got it. I just wanted to say that I'm one of the officer's wives. I couldn't do anything for you if you were the officer's only wife. But how about that? I'll mind. How about it? Is that just? Is it fair? Is it... Oh, I beg your pardon? Is he going to be allowed to have that whole place to himself while others suffer? Lady, he paid for that drawing room. But I must agree with you. It was what we call a space hop, thinking of no one but himself. Unfortunately, we can't do anything about it. Fine thing. I'll tell you what I'll do. If you're a good girl and don't bother me anymore, I may be able to get you an upper berth. But remember, <laughs> You're an this old is... darling. Thank you. Thank you so much. At all, it was all my fault. I'm sure it was mine, but we won't quarrel about it, will we? I can't see you and me quarreling about anything. Are you traveling alone? All alone, and I'm going just hundreds of miles. There doesn't seem to be any place for poor little me on this whole big train. Well, we certainly ought to be able to do something about that. Come on inside for a minute and let's talk it over. Into your drawing room? Why not? Do you think it would be all right? <laughs> I think it'll be perfect. Perhaps for just a moment. Oh, conductor. Yes? There. Sit down, honey. Make yourself comfortable. Cigarette? No, thanks. You, uh, going far? I'm going to Faber. That's in Nevada. Nevada, yes, I know. I'm going there myself. Really? It's a small world, isn't it? Well, not when you have to ride hundreds of miles on a train with no accommodations, if you know what I mean. But uh, you don't live in Faber. I would have seen you there before. See, uh, <laughs> I sort of specialize in pretty girls. <laughs> I'm going to live there for a while, anyway. Well, things are getting better and better. Oh, don't do that. I'm waiting for the conductor. He's trying to get an upper berth for me. 
A beautiful kid like you in an upper berth. That doesn't seem right. Guess I'm not as smart as you. Just imagine this big, beautiful drawing room all to yourself. Well, you want to know something? It's kind of lonesome in here at that. At least it was until you came. <laughs> now I think I'd better go. I really shouldn't stay. Unless, of Unless course... Unless what? Unless, of course, you'd like to take the upper berth and let me stay here. <laughs> I've got an idea that's worth ten of that. Kind of drafty. I catch cold easily. Let me fix you a little drink. Nothing like a good drink to get a friendship off to a right start. I guess it'll be like. So you have an idea worth ten of mine, eh? Well, I have still another idea, and this one's worth a hundred of yours. I'm going to... Yeah? Uh, it's okay on that upper lady. Don't give me no more flowers. <laughs> That's wonderful, because this gentleman's agreed to take the upper and sell me his drawing room, haven't you? That's right. Ladies first. That's my motto. I'll bet. Sugar. You've got a whole lot more sense than I thought you had. Now, I've ordered a little supper and we'll have a couple of drinks. You think of everything, don't you? Well, there's one thing I've been thinking about for quite some time. How's about a little kiss, huh? After all, we're among friends. Help! Hey, what are you doing? Shh! Get the conductor quickly! Yes, ma'am, he's practically here. What is this, a shakedown? Sort of. All right, sister, how much dough do you want? I don't want any money. All I want is this drawing room. Well, it looks like you're going to get that. That conductor is just dumb enough to fall for that yarn you're going to give him. It'll be nice knowing you, darling. Maybe we'll see one another again sometime. Favor. Hey, you come back here. I'll go fry your face. Oh, it's all right, Mr. Conductor. Everything worked out beautifully. But I thought you screamed for help. Oh, no. But the brakeman said you wanted... Well, I just wanted to tell you how lucky I was. That man was so nice. The minute I asked him for this drawing room, he gave it up without a, a struggle. And he's taking the upper berth, and I'm going to sit right here. Aren't you happy about it? Would you mind telling me just why you want this drawing room so badly? I want it for my new husband. We've been married exactly 48 and a half minutes. I'll show you the marriage certificate. Uh, never mind the certificate. I'm convinced. And besides, you know what the marriage ceremony says. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to love and cherish my husband. Well, I can love and cherish him a lot better here than in an upper berth. You got something there. You've been awfully sweet, Mr. Conductor. And now, if you'll just do one more thing for me. I'd better say yes right away and save myself a lot of trouble. <laughs> Would you please find my husband for me? He's a second lieutenant. Well, uh, what's he look like? Oh, you can't miss him. He has a uniform on. Lady, there's hundreds of uniforms on this train. Oh, but he's different. He's the only lieutenant who looks like a general. Honestly, he's the handsomest thing you ever saw in all your life. The first time I met him, I simply swooned. I'll try not to. What's his name? Robert Gordon. I imagine he's in one of the troop cars. I wouldn't be a bit surprised. I'll get him. Oh, uh, wait, I'll get your flowers. No, no. I'm beginning to look like a bride myself. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I, you're sorry. You're in kind of a hurry, aren't you? Well, if you're going where I'm going, you'd be in a hurry, too. Ann. Ann, darling. All right, wonder girl, come clean. What do you mean, come clean? Will you tell me how you managed to catch this train, how you managed to get this drawing room, or do I have to choke it out? <laughs> It was so simple, darling. After you left, I realized I shouldn't have let you go. I mean, not alone. So I followed you. I know all about that, but how about the drawing room? Oh, this was easy. Don't you know, sweetheart, that the world is just full of good Samaritans waiting to do nice things for people? I know, but they give up a drawing room at a time like this. Just because it is a time like this. A lovely little gray-haired lady had it. When she found out it was our wedding night, she just insisted that we have it. Oh, really? Gosh, that was sweet of her. You know, I'd like to meet her. Yes, you must. Oh, gosh, a wedding supper. Sweet old lady. You know, all we need now is a, a good drink. A good... Close your eyes and think a good think and open your eyes and here's your drink. Oh, what do you know? The uh, sweet little old lady? I 
she carried it on account of her insomnia. Really? Well, uh, maybe I better uh, give it back to her. Oh, never mind. She told me she always carries two or three extra bottles with her. Uh, she really has a case of insomnia. Well, here's to the sweetest, finest wife a man ever had. You know, darling, for a little small town girl who knows nothing about this evil world, you really know your way around. Bob. I mean it. You're so innocent. It sticks out all over you. That's why the little old lady was so sweet to you. She probably wanted to hug and kiss you as much as I do. <laughs> she was a little affectionate. Who is it? Sorry, Gordon, but you've just been detailed as officer of the day. Officer of the day? I've got to report to Captain Harrison immediately in the officer's car. All right, Randall. I'm sorry, honey, but this is war. I'll see you in the morning. Again. Hey, I ought to take a poke at you, uniform or not. Now, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I, I'm kind of uh, confused and disappointed. I thought I was going to be so comfortable in that drawing room tonight, and then I had to get out. Oh, that's okay, fella. I know exactly how you feel. Well, uh, sorry I bumped into you, bud. <laughs> This way, folks. I guess you folks don't know just how lucky you are. Oh, so you think we're lucky, do you? I'll say. The next folks that come in are going to have to sleep on the pool tables, and they're $1.20 an hour. These are the last two chairs we have available. Anything else? No. <laughs> no, thanks. Sleep well, you lucky people. <laughs> well, you can't say it isn't an adventure. Well, maybe I'm old-fashioned, but... I don't like adventures on my honeymoon. <laughs> All I want is... What? You. I'm sure we'll find an apartment tomorrow. I just simply walked my feet off today. I'm sorry I couldn't get away from the post to help you, but you know how it is. Of course I do. You have your job and I have mine. Finding a place for us to live in is mine. And you'll do it too. I'm not a bit worried. Not after the way you handled that drawing room on the train. See, I wonder what ever happened to that sweet little old lady. I'm too tired to even think about that now. Good night, darling. <laughs> Good night. Good night. When I left you in charge of this joint, I told you to remember one thing, didn't I? Well, all I'd done was... Shut up and I'll tell you what you did. Before I left, the authority said we had to quit selling liquor or quit gambling after midnight. Or we'd lose our license. We couldn't do both. And what did you do? Well, all I did... You ran a wide open game and sold liquor all night long. So now the city police are sore at us and we're liable to lose our license. And if the military police hear about it, they'll put us out of bounds. Of oh, course, look at that roll of bills. A greyhound couldn't jump over. That's not a good best going to do. It's if they slap us in the jug for running a crooked crap game. All we need is one squawk, and this place is hotter than a post office stove. But I didn't think that that's the trouble with you. You never do think. So now we've got to close down for a while. Rent the joint. Find some innocent-looking peasant to front the place until the heat's off. There's a parent sign down in the basement. Stick it up out front. Yeah, that ain't a bad idea. Except that I certainly do hate to pass up all that easy dough. Get it while the getting's good, is what I would say. That's exactly what will happen. We'll get it, and we'll get it good. Find the janitor and stash all this stuff down in the basement until it blows over. See what you can do by running the joint. Oh, we won't have any trouble finding a tenant. I can't remember an empty apartment in this town since they quit making button shoes. Yeah. Right now, let's get the whiskey out of the kitchen downstairs. Okay, boss. Let's get in the house too. <whistles> oh, brother. Oh, ain't that something? Oh, 
a dame, huh? And what a dame. She's got a lovely profile all the way down. The trouble with you, Blubber, you waste too much time on women. I waste time on women. <laughs> Coming from you, Mr. Ronaldo, that ain't exactly without humor. It goes, though. I've been played for a chump for the last time. From here on, with me, dames are out. With you, dames are out. <laughs> out the parties, out the nightclubs, out the supper. Out to the kitchen and get the whiskey. even if you had General Patton all these tanks clearing the way. Don't say that! You can't say that to me! <gasps> I didn't say nothing to her. Honest, all I said was you ain't got a chance and all of a sudden she... I'll take her. Why? Well, because she's a... She's my niece. She's my sister Hortense's little clown model. All right, folks. Stand aside. Give All right, bring it up, folks. Come on. Come on. Get out of the way. Some people are slightly moist, Mary. Keep your shirts on. I'll be right back. All right, Uncle. You can put me down now. Huh? Are you the nice gentleman who has the apartment for rent? You're going to be a darling and let me have it, aren't you? Am I? Because if you do, Uncle, you'll never regret it. My uncle just rented the apartment. It's exactly what I've been looking for. You certainly are. There's one very important matter we haven't discussed yet. Oh, yeah? You haven't told me how much the rent is. Oh, well, that all depends. I say it depended on how much you were prepared to give. You mean you're going to be sweet enough to leave it up to me? Oh, oh. I'm leaving it all right up to you, baby. Well... Suppose we say $60. $60? Or did you have another figure in mind? Well, uh, sort of. Well, suppose I give you 60 now, and uh, we'll discuss the, uh, the other figure later, shall we? Mm -hmm. Now, if you'll forgive me, there's a lot of things I want to do. I'd like to get a little rest, and then I want to get this place in order. Oh, uh, the place is in order. My uh, associate and I cleaned up here. Then I've got to find a telephone. Oh, you won't have to look far. Here's one right here. A telephone? A real telephone? What wonderful, wonderful luck. Now I can call my husband. Your husband? Been married exactly two days. Uh -huh. uh, so down your honeymoon, huh? <laughs> Hello, Camp Dixon? This is Mrs. Gordon speaking. I'd like to speak to my husband, Lieutenant Robert Gordon, please. That's who I am, Mrs. Robert Gordon. You haven't told me your name yet. Your name's Malloy, Horace P. Malloy. Better known to me associates as Blubber, but you can call me just plain sucker. Why should I? Hello? Hello, Bob, darling. Those are all for you, sweetheart. And I've got the most wonderful news for you. <laughs> no, just you keep quiet till I get through. Bob, I'm calling from home. Our home, yours and mine. <laughs> no, silly, it's right here in Faber. It's all the sweetest apartment. It has everything, even a telephone. And the loveliest landlord. <laughs> and tonight, sweetheart, I'll fix the nicest dinner for just the two of us. We'll have steak and mashed potatoes and peas and... What? Say that again and... Say it slow. You've been ordered on field maneuvers and won't be home for three days? Oh, Bob. Oh, of course, darling. I know it's as hard for you as it is for me. All right, sweetheart. I'll be expecting you about dinner time on Friday. Malloy, did you hear that? 
My husband won't be home for three days. What on earth am I going to do? Well, uh, we could uh, kind of use the time to sort of fix the joint up nice and homey-like. <laughs> you could do a lot with it in three days. I guess you thought I was your big moment. Well, don't worry. He'll be popping in soon. Here's the butter I borrowed, and uh, I thought maybe you'd like some giga water for supper. Champagne? That's wonderful. Oh, think nothing of it. I love to do things for people. That's why they call me Generous Flo from Kokomo. I put these on ice? Mm -hmm. I want you to meet my Bob. You'll like him. He's so handsome and strong. Oh, and... stop. You're breaking my girlish heart. Say, a fellow with specifications like that should be watched closely. You know, men are scarce nowadays. Say, I have to watch Mr. P like a hawk. Who do you watch? Anne, it's whom do you watch? Otherwise, all the dough Mr. P spent on my grammar would just be tossed out the window. <laughs> Sorry. You must bring him over sometime. Well, I'd love to. You know, Mr. P is so good to me. He's always asking me to marry him. I would if I could make up my mind about Hoyman. Hoyman? Yeah, he's the fellow I used to go with before I met Mr. P. Oh, well, I guess I'll be running along now. Uh, you won't be along long, though, will you? <laughs> Bob should be along any minute now. And I'm sure when he gets here, he won't want a crowd. <laughs> Thanks for bringing the wine over. Oh, champagne's stimulating, I always say. Uh, I mean, what I mean is that if things get dull, uh, you always have the wine to fall back on. See you around the pool hall. Bye. Oh, hello, darling. I just got back from a 37-mile hike. Bob! Bob, darling! This is all wrong. You're supposed to carry me over the threshold. What's the matter, darling? Oh. I'm all right. Just a little tired, I guess. Oh, that's better. You certainly gave me a fine scare. I'm kind of all in. They, they marched us 37 miles today. 37 miles. And today of all days. Well, if I can get rid of some of this hardware, I... Oh, oh my feet. Oh. You unwrap yourself, darling, and I'll get some hot water for your poor little foot. <sighs> there goes 8,000 pounds. Oh. So fix your poor, tired feet. Those are your feet, aren't they? Yeah, they're in there somewhere. I can hear them barking. And next comes a nice warm bath, and then you can get into your pajamas and robe, and then you can sit here and read the paper while I fix dinner. And after that... Robert Gordon, I don't believe you heard a word I said. Oh, I didn't, darling. I, on account of my feet. Maybe better stick a fork in them. I, I think they're done. Oh, poor honey. Come and get it, soldier. Everything's ready, darling. I fixed the most wonderful... Bomb! Dearest, wake up. Paul, who goes there? Take it easy, darling. Everything's all right. 
Five o'clock, you've got to get back to camp. I'll have everything ready in a moment. Oh. What in the name of... Cheer up, darling. Do you suppose if Romeo had had to march 37 miles with a hundred pounds of equipment draped around his anatomy, he could ever have made Juliet's balcony? Seems like I got myself quite a wife. <laughs> Not now, darling. You've got to get back to the office. I mean, the camp. Anyway, today's another day and tonight's another night. I'll fix a nice dinner and we'll have champagne. Champagne? Lola Byrne, she's the girl in the next apartment, brought it over for a wedding present. Well, good for her. Uh, you may be a little surprised when you see her, darling. She's the star of the floor show at the Rio Cabana nightclub and a very flashy dresser. But she's been awfully good to me these last three days. Well, that's enough for me. Anybody that's sweet to my baby is... In the world. You don't suppose somebody's hanging pictures at this time of day, do you? I hate to say it, darling, but you've really got to go now. But this time I don't mind even a tiny bit because it's Saturday and you'll be off early this afternoon and we'll have the whole weekend just to ourselves. Yep. <laughs> the whole weekend just to ourselves. Oh, my gosh. Bob, if you're going to tell me we aren't going to have this weekend to ourselves... Oh, I'll... but we are, honey. Uh, that is most of it. All right, sweetheart. I'm listening. I can promise you one thing, they won't stay long, they never do. Who won't stay long where? Well, it's a regular custom at the post. Every officer has to give a cocktail party for the other officers, and I had to invite a bunch of them over here this afternoon. Isn't that just dandy? I guess I'm the luckiest girl in the world. Well, you will try to make it something pretty special, won't you, darling? Because Colonel Hammersley Smith and his wife are coming, and if we can manage to make a good impression on them, sure, I... Sure, I'll make it something pretty special. That's a good girl. Now, I... I do have to go. Hey, I bet you're Lieutenant Gordon. And I'll bet you're Miss Laverne. I recognize you for Vance's description. description. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, I want to thank you for taking care of my wife while I was gone. Oh, don't mention it, I'm sure. It's awfully easy to be sweet to a nice kid like that. But I'm sure you found out that for yourself, didn't you, Lieutenant? Oh, yeah, yeah. Sure, well, uh, thanks anyway. I'll, I'll see you soon. So long. There it is. Read it and weep. Oh, Flo. What are we going to do? And what am I going to do about the cocktail party? Bob's bringing a bunch of officers over here this afternoon. Well, they'll take one look at that sign and do an about face. Bobby, too? He will if he doesn't want to spend ten years in the guardhouse. Well, they can't do this to me. Look, I'd love to agree with you, but they've already done it. Well, I'm going to undone it. Just you wait and see. Now, wait a minute. As one gal to another, they have cells in the guardhouse for women, too. Now, don't start monkeying around with the military, please. Boy, I'm tired. See you later. Hope you get a good rest. Oh! The things you bump into in the morning when you ain't got a gun. Oh, Mr. Blubber. Uh, good morning, Mrs. Gordon. Good morning. How's your husband? Oh, he left it some time ago. I'd like to talk to you. Will you come upstairs? Hi. Terrible thing has happened. Do we got to talk about terrible things at a time like this? I'm afraid so, because this affects everybody in the building. Oh, you're wrong, babe. You're the only one that affects me. And if you knew how you affected me, why... You... <laughs> Mr. Blubber, there's an out-of-bounds sign on the front of the apartment. Why, certainly there is. I put it there... What did you say? There's an out-of-bounds sign on the front of the building. That's what I thought you said. Miss Laverne says it means the building is out-of-bounds to soldiers and... And it also means that me and me associate is a couple of completely dead pigeons. But do you realize what it means to me? First of all, my husband and I can't be together. And then Bob's invited some very important officers over here this afternoon for cocktails. He'll be so humiliated. Believe me, I am greatly distressed by all this. It puts me in a very unhappy frame-up of mine. To think one silly old sign can spoil everything. Hey, wait a minute. Got an idea. 
What? Now, is this clam bake you're tossing this afternoon terribly important? Oh, it you? is. It's, it's very important. All right, now look. I stand outside, see. Does a soldier come along? I remove the sign. After he goes in, I put it back up again. That's wonderful. Mr. Blubber, you're a genius. Gee, <laughs> am I? But what about Bob? I mean, afterwards, he won't be able to live here with me. Uh, that's right. Uh, he won't, will he? But maybe you'll be able to do something about that, too. Oh, I'll do something about that. Thanks, Mr. Blubber. <laughs> genius. <laughs> that even sounds good. Look, boss, I'm standing out in front of the joint. With the sign right in my little hot hand. If one of them nosy MPs comes along, I push the sign up. Then when he goes away again, I takes it down. Ain't it simple? No, but you are. Me? Yeah. Look, stupid, when the army puts a place out of bounds, they mean it. You start horsing around with military regulations, they'll throw the book at you. Yeah, but boss, if you could have seen the look on the poor kid's face when I was talking to her and how glad she was when I promised to help her. If you let every dame with a hard luck story make a chump out of you. Two that is. Yeah? That's her now. Mrs. Gordon. I wanted to make sure everything was all right before I went to do my shopping. Oh, everything's copacetic, baby. Okay, then. I'll... Open the door. What's that, boss? I said open the door. Oh, sure, sure. I have a thousand things to attend. Oh. Well, this is a pleasure. Here, what goes? You two know each other? Indeed we do. You remember me, don't you, Mrs. Uh, 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 this is Mrs. Gordon. Uh, her husband's Lieutenant Gordon. Uh, this is me associate, Mr. Ace Rinaldo. That's right. But you can call me Ace, because we're not going to be formal with each other, are we? I suppose you're furious with me about that drawing room. Of course not. Maybe I was a little sore at the time, but that's all forgotten now. Uh, Blubber tells me he's been figuring out a way to get you out of a jam you're in. Uh, you didn't think it was such a hard idea. What are you talking about? You must have misunderstood me. I think it's the greatest idea I ever heard of. You're a genius. Hey, that's what she said. Then I can have my cocktail party? I mean, you think it'll work out? I think it'll work out perfectly. Oh, oh. you got nothing to worry about, baby. As long as I got my lucky buck, nothing can go wrong. I uh, do have a suggestion to make. Uh, you said you had some shopping to do? Yes. Why don't you take Blubber along with you to help you carry your bundles? Hey, that's wonderful. You sure you don't mind? Of course not. I have some things to attend to myself. <laughs> well, let's go, baby. So long, boss. Oh, Mac. I just want to let you know everything's okay again. Yeah, you can start sending them along any time this afternoon. Now, a dame will open the door, you see? And when she does, all I have to say is, the lieutenant sent us. Get that? That's it. The lieutenant sent us. Everything's going to be all right. Get in touch with the boys out of camp. Okay, Mac. I'll be seeing you. Just a second. Got that, Mick? Just say the lieutenant sent. 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 Looking for somebody, bud? <laughs> Why, I live here. You do? Say, how about you, Lieutenant Gordon? How'd you know? Oh, your wife was telling me all about you. What? You know my wife? I'll say. As a matter of fact, I just left a little while ago. What? Sure. Her and me did all the shopping together for your party. Then after that, I was helping to fix up little sandwiches and things. And if I do say so myself, and why shouldn't I? I'm a fast man with an anchovy. Well, uh, thanks. Hey, that looks mighty pretty. You know what I forgot? For one thing, you forgot to kiss your husband for the last two minutes. <laughs> Let's do something about it then, shall we? Now, uh, what were you saying and uh, what about it? Sausages. What? 
Oh, those little sausage things you broil and stick on toothpicks. No self-respecting cocktail party's complete without them. Well, I guess that means a trip to the delicatessen for me. Would you mind very much, Precious? If I can march 37 miles for a captain of whom I'm not particularly fond, I guess I can travel five blocks with the only girl I ever loved. <laughs> Hey. Everything all right, Lieutenant? Everything's wonderful. Hey. Hiya, Junior. Hiya, pal. Oh, you dropped your book. Yeah, yeah. You, you dropped, dropped your, your book. book. Oh, that's all right. You can have it. All right, hand it over. That's what we come here for, ain't it, boys? A little soft dough. Yeah, that's, that's what, what we come, come here for. I don't get it. Everything's okay upstairs, ain't it? Yeah. Who told you? Ah, uh, you needn't be cagey with us, chum. The lieutenant sent us. Yeah, yeah. the lieutenant the sent us. You did, huh? Well, in that case, I guess you can go right upstairs. Come on, boys. Let's see if we can do ourselves some good. Yep. Hey, Marblehead. Hey, uh, by any chance, was you uh, referring to me? You're spending a lot of time in front of this joint today, ain't you? Oh, it's on the orders of me doctor, bud. It seems he wishes me to soak up a whole lot of sunshine on account of I ain't getting enough of this here uh, vitamin C. Vitamin C. Yes? The lieutenant sent us. He did? That's right, ain't it, boys? Yeah, yeah sure, the, the lieutenant, lieutenant sent, sent us. us. Won't you come in? I was just putting the finishing touches to the hors d'oeuvres. Ah, don't you go to no trouble on our account. Just trot them out the way they are, right, boys? You said it. Uh. Well, hey, it's nice now. They got some swell babes around here, too. Yeah. Yeah, chairs with facts on them. Lieutenant Senator. Lieutenant Senator. Hello, Tommy. How are you? Yes. Lieutenant Senator. Right upstairs, boys. First door on your left. Uh -huh. Thanks, Thanks Al. Al. She's doing better than I did. This isn't just any ordinary mink coat, Daddy. Why, this fellow raised all those little minxies as petsies. Open up that door! Open it up before I break it down! And while I'm at it, I'll break his neck! He will, too! Oh, well, heavens me, what'll we do? Anne's apartment. Anne's apartment? Yes, it's right next door. You go in and tell her I sent you, and I'll explain everything. Yes, but look, there, I, I'm here on this ledge. Me, I'm here. I'm... Well, it's better than having that gorilla tear you limb from limb. I know, but you know what I said. Excuse me. The lieutenant sent us. would eat up everything. They ain't got no manners. When do we start? Start? Yeah. Maybe we'd better wait till the others get here. Okay, but it's gonna be on the level this time, ain't it? On the level? Yeah. And remember, you got to shake them, make them cackle, and a long roll against the board. By the way, girlie, what's the limit? Go as far as you like, I guess. Uh, do you fade, baby? Do I what? Ah, let's not wait for the others. Let's get started. Really think we should. There's some bourbon in the kitchen. Poison! Hey, fellas, get out of the point! Poison! 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 Come on, hush up! I want to jump! Poison? I don't drink. You don't drink? Would you like something to eat? Candy? <laughs> Have a sandwich. Sure you won't have some.
some bourbon. Hey, Casanova, cut it out. And you told me you was never going to do that again. I'm sorry, girlie, but Casanova here is very unallergic to girls. Hey, I think that window cleaner wants to talk to you. What? The window cleaner. Oh. Oh, dear. Oh, I beg your pardon for this uh, unceremonious entrance, but you see, uh, Flo sent me. You got your signals mixed, chum. That shit ought to be the lieutenant sent me. Would you please tell me what this is all about? Flo said she'd explain to you later on. Chop and cheeks, it's the old man. Who? Old Sutton, the, the colonel, Hammersley Smith. Of course, he's coming here, too. Here? He knows me, and I, I gotta get out of here, too. Oh, oh, it's too late. He's on his way up. We better hide. Okay, sister, you know the layout. Do your stuff. You mean hide you? Not quick. Why don't you can get in the closet? That's for me. You two get in the shower and pull the curtain. We'll get in the shower and pull the curtain. No tricks. But no tricks. What about me? Uh, me. Uh, uh, I've got to get, get out of here. Bedroom. Oh. Under the bed. Under the bed. What about us? Under the bedroom closet. What about us? Where are we going? Just a minute, please. You get in the closet. Put us in place. Go. You get in the kitchen, in the broom closet. In the kitchen. <laughs> you'd, you'd better hide. <laughs> Just a minute, please. Is this Mrs. Gordon? Yes. I'm Colonel Hammersley Smith. This is my adjutant, Captain Steen. Won't you come in? Thank you. Bob will be here in a minute. We're afraid you might not be at home. We've been knocking for quite a while, but I guess you were busy. Yes, Colonel, I was very busy. May I fix you a drink? Well, no thanks. We'll wait for the others. My wife will be along shortly with Major and Mrs. Brown. I see. Won't you sit down? Charming place you have here, Mrs. Gordon. Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. Gordon, I know you must feel strange and alone, but as soon as you get acquainted, your apartment will be so full of people, you won't know where to put them. Colonel, you'd be surprised how many people this apartment will hold. <laughs> I've heard so much about Mrs. Gordon, I'm simply dying to meet her. After all, any little addition to our social group. Oh, hello, Lieutenant. Hello, everybody. This is quite a coincidence. Yes. Shall we go in? Yes. Sure. As soon as the Colonel and Captain Steen get here, I think we'll be all present in the counter tour. Oh, the uh, Colonel went up a little while ago, Lieutenant, with another guy. Oh, thanks. Uh, have fun, kids. Hello, darling. Hello, honey. How are you? Uh, this is Mrs. Holt. How do you do? How do you do? And Mrs. Williams. Hello. And Mrs. Brown. Glad to know. Mrs. Smith. How do you do? How do you do? And Mrs. Randall. Hello. And Major Brown. How are you? And Lieutenant Randall. Good. Morning. Lieutenant Holden. And Lieutenant Williams. How do you do? How do you do? Well, I, uh, I got the sausage. It's too late now. What do you think of that, Mrs. Smith? My wife sends me out for something she doesn't even need. She's probably got somebody in the closet she's trying to get rid of. <laughs> 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 well, let me take your hats, gentlemen. Thank you. Pardon me. Okay. Good heads. And I'll put these in the closet. Oh, well, I'll do it, darling. Maybe I haven't had a chance to get rid of the man that's in there yet. <laughs> <laughs> the gift. Oh, yes. Uh, shall we go into the living room? Yes, of course. <laughs> I got him, girlie. Say, I let my drink inside. You mind getting me another one? Uh, sit down, everybody, and make yourselves at home. What happened? While I was waiting, I got hungry. You ate all that? Well, we'll have some more sandwiches shortly. While Mrs. Gordon was waiting, she was uh, nibbling a little bit. <laughs> These highball glasses, she's been nipping a bit, too. Uh, but in the meantime, let's have a drink, shall we? Take it easy, baby. 
could be. Well, there's more where that came from. Lieutenant Randall, would you like to help us? Lead the way, Lieutenant. Uh, take care of things while I'm gone, will you? And uh, take it easy, honey. To the kitchen. It's been a lovely day, hasn't it? I guess. Maybe, maybe I'd better fix some more sandwiches. I'm hungry. I mean, you must be hungry. Are you sure you've got some more? Oh, I know there's some more around somewhere. Maybe it's in here. Bob! It's not in here. Well, then where is it, honey? It's... it's in there. See, I told you there's some more around somewhere. In here? No! No, it's not in there. Now, look, honey, this is no time to play. Where is it? What are you looking for? <laughs> What am I looking for? I'm looking for the whiskey. Oh, hold the whiskey. Uh, it's in there. <laughs> now look, honey, you're letting this party get on your nerves. Take it easy. These people are your friends. There's nothing in this house you have to be afraid of. <laughs> How's the cocktail party going? They're all up there, including a brass hat with a pan so frosty that freeze the flame off a blowtorch. <laughs> no kidding, a real brass hat? I'll say. He's got one of them tin ducks on each shoulder. And I heard his stooge call him Colonel Hammersley Smith. Colonel? Oh, this is going to be even better than I thought it was. What is it? Come on in, brother. They got something I want to talk to you about. Information. Give me the telephone number of the headquarters of the military police at Camp Dixon. Oh, please. boss. You're not going to pin everything onto that poor little kid. That's right. Yes, operator. Okay, thanks. Maybe the kid didn't mean it. Shut up and beat it and get out of here, will you? Like a monkey out of me, will she? Hey, look, we've done some pretty shady things in our time, but this will is Will you shut up and get out of here? Hello? Camp Dixon. Hey, listen, I want to talk to, um... Pardon me just a second, will you? Are you going to get out of here? Hello? Hey, Camp Dixon, I want to talk to the headquarters of the military police. I don't mind telling you that on that hike yesterday, I'd have given my eye teeth for one of these. It must have been dreadful. Poor Walter was so tired when he got home, he couldn't sleep a wink all night. How did it affect you, Lieutenant? Oh, well, Bob slept like a child, didn't you, darling? Yeah. Oh, those little sausages. I'll go and get them. I'll be right back, darling. I claim the average woman is a very bad housekeeper. She only polishes the things that show. Yes, but just take a look under her bed, and what do you find? Slugs. I beg your pardon? That's a word we made up to describe those rolls of gray dust. You know, they look sort of like transparent mice. And those sausages have gone. Who could have taken them? I ate them. You ate them, too? What an appetite. Well, says so she has. Do you suppose that she could be... She could be. Made your wife's wife acted the same way. Well, uh, let's have another drink, shall we? <laughs> What's that? There's somebody in the kitchen. I'll go. That's my department. What are you doing? Got any mustard? Get down from there. Quick. Get back under. Major? No. Is everybody having a good time? Oh, and what caused that noise in the kitchen? A wolf. A wolf? I mean, a cat. They always remind me of wolves. If you'll excuse me, I'd like to go and freshen up a little. I'll go with you. Is there anything wrong, my dear? Not yet. I mean, no, not a thing. Now, look, my child, I don't want to appear over-curious, but you have been acting rather nervous and upset. If there's anything you want to tell me, I'd be glad to help you. Oh, no, Mrs. Smith, but it's very sweet of you to ask. Here's the dressing table right here. Is there anything I can get for you? Here's a mirror. Do you have everything you need? Oh! 
What's the matter? Oh, what a beautiful compact. Oh, the light's much better this way. I'll... Oh! Hello. 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 Not you. Did you say? I said the light's much better in the other room. Much more lighted. Oh! Shall we join the others? I'm sorry we were gone so long. I'll get it. I'll get it. That child is acting very unusual. She has a reason to. As a woman, I can explain it to you. Oh. Oh. Nice to see you again. Well, you're not surprised to see me, are you? Well, I didn't expect you, but... Bob, this is Mr... Oh, I've seen you somewhere before. Yes, I saw you on the train coming here. The night I met her. Well, you see, Bob, it was like this. She was this. on the train. She didn't have any place to sleep. And I had a drawing room, and she was friendly. Oh, so this is a sweet little gray-haired old lady, eh? What do you want here? Well, I own this apartment building. A little lady needed an apartment, so the most natural person for her to turn would be a good friend of hers. Why, you... Bob, sure... Right here, we see that the little lady is very comfortable, so don't worry, Lieutenant. You're having a nice party. Sorry, I can't stay. You'll excuse me, won't you? Bob, you don't believe. Is everything all right? Bob, please listen to me. Not now, later. Oh! What's the matter? I don't know. I mean, I must have one of my dizzy spells. If you'll excuse me, my smelling salts are in the kitchen. Major Wife's wife used to have dizzy spells, too. What are you doing here? So don't waste no time talking to us. Get them soldiers out of here. Why? On account of Ace's spill, the means to get square with you for watching under him on the train. Oh. The MPs are probably on the way here right now to raid the joint. Now, if you was to go fast, you might be out in the clear by the time they get here. But you gotta go quick like a bunny. And if I was you to see. From here on out, I would bear in mind the immortal words of that great poet, Edgar Allan Longfellow. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. And so the general said to the soldier, don't you know if you persist in shooting dice, you'll never pass the pearly gates? And the soldier said, general, if I make this pass, I'll buy the pearly gates. <laughs> Do you want to say something, darling? Yes. I want you all to get out. And get out? But fast. And are you all right? Don't touch me. Please go. I must be alone. I can't stand crowds. I want you all to get out. Get out or I'll scream for help. Get the hat. Oh, don't get the hats, but let them go without them, but hurry! Oh, dear, we must help her. What have I done? I want you all to get out. Oh, no, we must be rough. Well, that might be serious. I think she's called a doctor. Well, I don't want a doctor. Bob, please throw them out. Darling, what's happening? The main issue is what's going to happen, you lucky boy. That's right, Bob. Really? Why, the lucky stiff? I don't want to lie quiet. Oh, you, must, you mustn't just fight yourself like this, Mrs. Gould. It's very bad for you at a time like this. Oh, I see. Well, then certainly we should go and leave her with her husband. No, you've got to take him with you. Darling, you don't know what you're saying. Now, now, don't be too concerned, Lieutenant. I understand the slight touch of delirium. Under such circumstances, not at all unusual. Symptomatic, you might say. Symptomatic? Of what? Don't you understand yet, you goof? No. Oh, no. Oh, no. No! No, I tell you, no! No, no! Now, Lieutenant, we realize how happy you are, but... I'm uh, not happy. I, I tell you, it's no. It's definitely no! Lieutenant! Yes, sir. My dear boy, you're a soldier. Now, this situation is not unlike going into battle, and you must keep a clear head. Remember, you're a leader. You're responsible for the safety of those in your charge. Now, you just get us our hats and we'll, uh... I'll get them. I'll get them. Here you are, Curly. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are. I'm so glad you could come to the party. Really enjoyed having you. Here we go. Here we go. Don't go.
go. Let's all have another drink, shall we? One for the road. The party barely got started, did it? I'm feeling much... What's the meaning of this? Are you aware, sir, that this building is out of bounds? Certainly not. It has been reported that a number of enlisted personnel were seen entering the building. With your permission, sir, we would like to search the place. Of course. Right ahead. All right, ma'am. Lieutenant, do you know anything about this? It isn't his fault. I had the sign taken down until we were all in here. Lieutenant, I'll have to ask you to return to the post until I can make a thorough investigation. Believe it or not, I was waiting for a jeep. Come out of that. In here, man. I found these two playing hide-and-seek in a shower bath. The one in civvies hiding in under a bed, probably a deserter. All right, take them out. All right, outside. Lieutenant, I found these two hiding in the broom closet. Oh, Bob, darling, what's the matter? So this is the home of the happy little bride. Yeah. Vinny, you know, there ain't nothing in the world like a happy married life. It's the only thing. Vinny, marriage is a great institution. Yeah, but who wants to live in an institution? I say, now, you listen to me. Now, you've had about this long enough. Now, I've made up my mind that no matter what you say, as long as we're here in the city, I'm going to take the bull by the horns and get married. All right, Jonas. Vinny! You... It certainly looks funny, marrying the bull. Oh, shut up. I'll take the pot. Can you tell us where we could find the apartment of Mrs. Robert Gordon? Mrs. Gordon? Oh, 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 I sure can. And just to show you I'm a gentleman, I'll take you right to it. Oh, pardon me. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, ma'am. These uh, two mugs just ain't hep to etiquette. Oh, come on, Jonas. We'll find it ourselves. Oh, sure. <gasps> Say, what's going on here? Oh, Flo, everything's gone wrong. I'm the unhappiest girl in the whole world. You think you got trouble? Look what happened to me. Poyman do this. Me, Flo Laverne, the gal who knew all the answers. How I permit myself to get embroiled with a guy who was by no means my social equal. Boy, what a left hook. <laughs> Hey, where's everybody? I thought you were going to slow. The most dreadful thing has happened. Mr. Pete didn't fall off the window ledge, did he? No, but they sent Bob back to camp. They'll probably never let him out. And even if he does come back, you'll never want to see me again. There, there, honey. Let's cry together. <laughs> What's that? Hey, if it's Hoyman, uh, tell him I joined the West. It's probably another MP. Oh, well, that's different. Leave us face it. <laughs> Oh, say, Vinny, it looks like we was on the wrong reservation here. Put that down. Put it down. The video. Jonas. Oh, that's a pit. Mm -hmm. Darling. I was never so glad to see anybody in all my life. Oh, well, what's yeah. been going on around here? You folks been having a ruckus? Of course not. No? Well, then who gave you the black eye? Nobody gave it to me. I had a fight for it. Well, I'm Lavinia Thondike. This little girl here is my niece. And whoever done anything to make her unhappy has got to answer to me. Who was it, Flo? She's my friend. It was all Colonel Hammersley Smith's fault. What's that name you just mentioned? Colonel Hammersley Smith. He's a commanding officer at Camp Dixon. Well, blow <laughs> me down. He's a man who had Bob confined in quarters, and it wasn't Bob's fault. Of course <laughs> it wasn't. Now, hold everything, Annie. Where's your telephone? on the table. <laughs> I want to talk to Camp Dixon, please. All right, Annie, go on with the rest of your story. Oh, we had to give a cocktail party. I, I'm sorry, madam. Uh, but, but madam, but madam. Who is it, Captain? It's some woman, sir. She insists on speaking to you. A Lavinia Thorndike. I told her she would have to state her business, but she insists on speaking to you. Did you say Lavinia Thorndike? Yes, sir. Well, that's a 
Vinnie, get it here. Hello, Vinnie Thorndike. Well, bless my soul, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. How's the tin soldier, huh? <laughs> Say, listen, Hammerhead. What have you done with my niece's husband? Who? Well, Lieutenant Gordon, that's who. Out of bounds, my Aunt Hattie's bustle. Listen, Hammerhead. You remember the last war. Uh, you remember there was a young girl and a young lieutenant? And they were kind of, sort of in love, you remember? And if I recollect correctly, she lived on the far side of town in a section that was out of bounds, and it didn't stop the lieutenant any. Did it, lieutenant, huh? I mean, Hammerhead. Now listen, Hammerhead. The guy who's really responsible for all this is a double-cross and rattlesnake named Ace Rinaldo. But are you sure? Well, that puts a different light on the whole thing. Why, yes, Vinnie, of course. I'll take care of it right away. <laughs> all right. Goodbye, Vinnie, old girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Captain Norton, Lieutenant Gordon's immediate release. Give him a 48-hour pass. Tell me he can spend it with his wife. The apartment's no longer out of bounds. Yes, sir. Sorry, I... You're sorry. You still in a hurry? I got a reason to hurry. And remember this, fella. When you get the idea that you're smart and everybody else is dumb, the dumb ones might turn out to be smarter than the smart ones who are really dumb. Don't worry, you'll have plenty of time to figure that one out. this thing right. Maybe you'd better put your hat in the closet, because if there happens to be a soldier left over, I want you to be the one to find him. <laughs> Attention, please. We are interrupting this program to bring you a special bulletin from the commanding officer of Camp Dixon. All leaves have been canceled, and all officers and enlisted men are ordered to report back to their posts immediately. Ann. Ann, darling. Would somebody please get me some water? My wife just fainted.